Okay. Hi, everyone. Guess where I am? I'm at school. And so I thought it would be a fun little treat to pretend that you're sitting right here in school. So guess what? This is the last assignment of the whole year. We have three weeks left of school. And this is the final hurrah. There is no final exam. There is no more homeworks. There's just this one project that allows you to kind of dig deep and think about sustainability in a way that's going to inspire you. Okay? I know that you can't see every word on my document, but I also know that you have it at your house. So I'm going to use this here to kind of like walk you through what to expect on this assignment. And then uh, hopefully you can just read it on your own and kind of continue to process this and think about what it all means. So the project is called Sustainability in the Environment. And we've talked a lot about sustainability. You should be really comfortable now with this diagram with the three parts, the environment, the economy, and society. And then we're talking about the little piece there in the middle where it considers all three aspects of sustainability. And so um, you absolutely have to be able to think about this diagram and how the three pieces fit together in order to do this project. So basically the United Nations got together. Uh, it's now like five years ago. It was in 2015. And they said, okay, there are 17 major goals that we have for sustainability on Earth. And so conveniently, they have this awesome website that we're going to be using to come up with your project. And it's really, um, if you follow the steps, it's not going to be as challenging as you might be thinking. Okay? So... Basically, I don't know if I should read this whole thing to you or not, but I guess I will. Um, the United Nations has developed the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that have been created to transform our world. Um, in September of 2015, world leaders came together and adopted these goals at a United Nations summit. And they came into effect on January 1st, 2016. And over the next 13 years, citizens and governments are tasked to work together to change the world. All countries need to work together to advance prosperity while protecting the planet. The first goal is ending poverty, which this is not an easy task. It's a complex goal influenced by many social and environmental issues that have been included in the other 16 goals. The 17 goals for sustainable development recognize that everyone on earth must come together to work on all of these issues if we're going to create lasting change. So, your job. Yes, you can actually work in a small group even though you are in separate houses. We now are really good at Google Hangout and Zoom and FaceTime and all those things so you actually can work together in a group if you wish to. And you are going to research and create a presentation. Let me just be clear. You're not actually going to present it to the class. I thought, I thought we were going to have one more week of school, but now with that last week being catch up, um, we are not going to present. You are just going to be submitting online a presentation to me. So you're going to pick one of these 17 goals of sustainable development and basically you're trying to make like a sales pitch. Like why should the reader care to make a change in their own personal life? Why should the reader donate money to this cause? And you're really gonna just try to like inspire the, the reader um, of your project to 
like care about this particular goal of sustainability. So I would think that your product, your end product is gonna end up with like 10 to 15 slides. So let me just um, scoot ahead here to, this is the link that's gonna be uh, like key for you. So we go here and we click on the UN Sustainable Development uh, website and it starts you off with six of, oh no, I guess it has all of them here. So these are all the goals and notice that when I scroll over one, it flips like the page of a book. But um, goal number one is poverty. It already talked about how poverty is like one of the biggest issues. This is a very significant issue. Why would poverty matter when it comes to environmental issues? Um, there's a lot that goes into this, but when people are living in poverty, and poverty looks a lot different in, uh, in Westbrook compared to um, developing countries um, in India and Asia and parts of Africa. Um, poverty is going to make it so that people are not able to like think about what's best for the environment. They're just trying to survive. Um, so anyways, the first six goals are poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, empowering women and girls, and avoiding wasting water. So those are our first six. Now, when you think about science, we've kind of talked about water pollution. That's like an environmental issue that we've talked about a lot. In this class, we haven't talked as much about hunger and poverty and vaccinations, but all of those things do play a role in making our earth more sustainable. You might want something that's like a little bit more like strictly scientific, or you might want this more social aspect. This is your personal choice that you get to make in this project, okay? Let's just scroll through what some of the other options are. So goal seven is uh, energy efficiency, okay? Um, goal eight is creating job opportunities for the youth. Decent work and economic growth. Goal nine is innovation in industry and infrastructure. How can we build and make things to be more sustainable? Goal 10 is reducing inequalities. Goal 11 is sustainable cities and communities. How can we design our cities to be more sustainable? Goal 12 is if you're inspired by recycling, reduce, reuse, recycle, goal 12 is for you. It's responsible consumption and production. All about um, what we do with the things that we buy and what happens to them after. Goal 13 is all about climate, climate action. So if you are inspired by the climate change unit, you might want to focus here. Goal 14 is life below water. So for me, I love turtles. Maybe I would want to do the life below water and uh, focus specifically on turtle habitat and what we're doing to impact that. Goal 15 is life on land, same kind of thing. Maybe you're into studying uh, the Asian elephant or the polar bear. Um, if you wanna pick a particular species to focus on there, you can uh, do life on land. Um, I think 16 and 17 get a little bit more complicated, but people have definitely done them in the past. Peace, justice, and strong institution. 
So we want to like have accountability with our government. Um, and number 17 is partnership. So we want to like have strong relationships globally and within our country. So it's gonna take you probably, I don't know, half an hour to even figure out which topic you wanna do. But once you pick a topic, like let's just go with um, avoiding wasting water. Whatever goal you wanna choose, you click on it and it says read more about it and it's going to bring you to all kinds of facts and figures that are going to help you get started on your project so um, you definitely don't want to skip over this introductory part here it kind of puts things in perspective it gets you started on your topic and gets you thinking about what other questions do I want to ask about this topic of course, I have the spinning wheel of death here. Let's see if it's gonna snap out of it. Um, but one of the things that your assignment asks you to do is um, get a little bit more specific within your goal and you have to pick some targets to focus on. Um, so you will want to read this, but then scroll down here where it says, facts and figures, goals, goal targets, and then links. You can pretty much do almost all of your research based off of this one website, because if you use the links that are on the website, it's gonna help you find quality information within your topic. So we're talking about water here, and it gives you a few facts and figures. It says one in four healthcare facilities lack basic water services, three in 10 people lack access to safely managed drinking water. Those are some like really big facts that you're gonna want to incorporate into your project. Um, the targets, this is like, okay, you have the goal of you want clean water. How are we gonna break it down into more specific, uh, tangible goals that we can reach? So they have specific dates and all of these, almost all of these are by 2030, something specific will happen. And so you want to um, select a couple of targets that you're going to focus your research on a little bit more. So one of your first steps is to kind of look at these targets and see where do you want to focus your project. If you're just saying your whole project is on water, that's way too big of a topic because we just can't handle all of that in this like three week research project. We need to get a little bit more specific and more focused. Um, let me just show you when you click on links here, There's, all, there's like 10 different live links of places that you can go to find more information. So um, your job is to pick one of these 17 goals and then get a little bit more specific with the targets. And now let's just go back and see what else the assignment asks you to do. So it says, first you have to identify the problem being ad addressed. You want specific data, you want specific statistics, and you want to pick at least three uh, of those targets to discuss. You want to be specific about who and where this problem is affecting. Um, you might say this is like happening in many places around the world, but then you want to pick two countries or two communities where um, the problem is happening and it says highlight similarities and differences between the two. So you could talk about the water issue in um, California, which is going to look a lot different than the water issue that is happening in Honduras or in uh, Guatemala or in a country in Africa, okay? Um, so it, it, you want to 
to kind of highlight how there may be differences between different places with this issue. Um, you want to um, talk about what is the cause, and this is often not very easy to address. Um, different people might point the finger at different reasons why this is an issue. So it gets a little bit more of that social aspect of the problem. Um, so you, you want to figure out who and where it's being affected and then start to talk about the cause of the problem. Um, how long has it been occurring? What, and then bring that diagram back in. What are the social aspects, the economic aspects, the environmental aspects of the problem? And what has been done, if anything, to try to help and solve the problem? This is where I think it gets really exciting. You want to like make this feel as real as possible to the um, reader. And so now you want to like really talk about some details of a specific community or region that's being impacted. You want to tell their story and make this issue kind of come alive for the reader with pictures, maps, um, specific stories of maybe even one particular child or one particular family, one particular town. Um, if you're doing an animal, you don't have like a town per se, but you would want to talk about like, okay, the turtles in Hawaii or the turtles in, uh, you know, one particular location. So some people, it's gonna be very like human connected and some people's projects are gonna be more about animals. So you have to kind of be flexible here with number four. And finally, you find one charity organization that's working towards helping your problem and you want to kind of like make a sales pitch here for like, here's why we should care, here's uh, where you should invest your money if you're gonna make a donation. All the while through each one of these issues, you wanna make sure that you're talking about the social, economic, and environmental components of the issue, okay? Um, you want to incorporate pictures into your work and you also want to always make sure that when you're doing research you cite your sources using APA format. So um, I think that um, when, I don't know if you can see this well or not, I'll bring the camera over. Let's see. So this is how it all kind of breaks down. So we've got um, three weeks left of school if you are in good standings. So I would say that this first week you want to make sure you have your topic declared and you want to do numbers one through three, which is basically like pick your problem, find your targets, figure out who and where the problem is affecting, and explain the cause. Next week, the 26th to the 29th, you'll wanna do number four and five, which is where you get more specific about an example of a community or a region that's being impacted and select your charity. And then June 1st to 5th, you want to be making sure that you are incorporating the social, economic, and environmental components into the rest of your project and making your presentation. So you should be submitting your project on June 5th. Um, if you haven't done uh, any of the work from quarter four at the end of June 5th, then you have June 8th to 12th to catch up. So that is kind of like the big plan. I am going to post a Google form each week for the next two weeks to kind of like make sure that you're on target um, but you should be making your own note sheet and make sure that you are um, staying on track. You don't want to delay until the last second because this is a lot of work that needs to get broken up into the next three weeks. All right, guys. Good luck.
One last little look around our old classroom here. All right, bye.